Uh, coming up next, we have Edwina Rogers. Uh, she's going to give a talk uh, about the truth behind Washington. Ooh, lovely. She's the executive director of secular. For, uh, she's the executive director director of a secular coalition of America. She's a lob, uh, lobbyist and an attorney. Uh, she's worked for two presidents and four senators. And I'll leave it up to you to guess which ones. Um, she's a regular guest on MSNBC and uh, Fox News. Again, she's doing a talk called The Truth Behind Washington. Her haiku is, deep in Washington, Edwina fights the good fight. I couldn't do it. Please welcome Edwina Rogers. Everybody. Okay, so we're going to have the truth according to Washington, and I'm going to make it a little bit entertaining, which is unusual when you're talking about politics. So, um, as you were told, I'm Edwina Rogers, and I'm the executive director for the Secular Coalition for America, and I've been in this position for approximately one year. So, we're going to start off with something very interesting we will have a fairy tale. So, the truth according to Washington, a fairy tale. <laughs> so, once upon a time, Earth was created, 6,000 years ago. Have you heard that before? <laughs> there it is, all of a sudden, appeared one day. And then our next slide here, there's a, a quote. It says, I want Louisiana to be a place where teachers can use an evangelical curriculum that teaches that humans walked alongside dinosaurs 6,000 years ago. And you see there, who is that? Bobby Jindal, the uh, current governor of Louisiana. <laughs> yes, you're thinking, good thing you're not in Louisiana. <laughs> there you have the human being chased by the dinosaur. All right, so who do we have next? Let's see, this is all very entertaining. So, well, this issue has to do with until dinosaur flatulence caused a flood that changed the earth, his quote was, we don't know what those other cycles were caused by in the past. He said in February 2007 hearing, could be dinosaur flatulence, you know, or who knows. We'll see what the dinosaur does here. There's a dinosaur. Another one. A little bit of dinosaur gas. Whole thing blows away. Nuclear blast. And then we have, yes, of course, it's all cleaned up by the flood. Lucky Noah made a boat. There's the ark, drop down, large enough to save creatures responsible for this gas-induced flood. <laughs> so we have uh, here a quote from the Texas State Board of Education member Don McLeroy, and he said there was a room on there for brontosaurus, that they were included at that time. There we go. And then, of course, he's going to need a mate. There you see. She's got lipstick on. <laughs> okay, so we have another very famous quote here, one of my favorites. This one says, 
Even though the dinosaurs are now gone, we humans can use all the resources we like because a new flood can just fix it all. All right, and so we have here, uh, this is, uh, this quote is by Dana Rockerbacher, and he is on the uh, House Energy and Technology Space Committee. I know, that's, uh, that's quite, uh, quite the shame. And he also said further, I would point out that if you're a believer in the Bible, one would have to say the Great Flood is an example of climate change that can, certainly wasn't caused by mankind overdeveloping hydrocarbon energy. So we have a, another interesting slide. We did look around to see if we could find a quote from a uh, Democratic member in the House or the Senate. We had to look a little bit hard, but we did find one here. <laughs> we found several. Uh, it says, good thing too, because Earth could tear away at any moment. There's Earth. And uh, this quote here is by Hank Johnson. And he basically said, my fear is that the whole island, he's talking about uh, increasing the size of the military in Guam, would become so overly populated that it would tip over and capsize. <laughs> so there you have Guam tipping over because too many military personnel have been stationed there in Guam and it's sliding into the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so. That's the end of our fairy tale, but you know, let's get, let's get serious here. This was very amusing. These attitudes expressed in this narrative that I have shared with you are the people who are shaping public policy throughout this country. The government that put a man on the moon has been replaced with leaders that seem to lack even the most basic understanding of how this world works. Senators that set environmental policy believe that dinosaur fluctuants may be the cause of global warming. Representatives on the Science Committee believe that dinosaurs are extinct because there was no room on the ark for them. When we vote for our public officials, we do so believing that they are qualified, informed, and responsible enough to make sound decisions based on facts. But logic on the Hill is more often based on opinion, it's based on religion, and the most vocal demographic at any given time. In my 25 years as a lobbyist in Washington, I've seen it all and I've heard even more. From education to social policy, I've heard the truth according to Washington and their truth just doesn't add up. The Secular Coalition for America represents 85% of the Americans that believe the Earth is more than 6,000 years old. On behalf of the Secular Coalition for America, it's my honor today to call out the fakes, unmask the charlatans, and introduce you to elected officials that are enemies of science and reason. We have heard the truth according to Washington. Now I represent and present to you the truth about Washington. So the Science Committee is responsible for much of the political conversation on the environment and the space program and scientific research. So let's start right at the top. So here we have Ralph Hall, he's former chairman of the Science Committee. He doesn't believe that 97% of climate scientists with their research that suggests that human activity is causing global warming. When asked about global warming, Hall responded, I've had people tell me if we had all the money in the world and put it in Texas Stadium, people couldn't change nature's future one iota. He also said that According to the BP oil spill in 2010, his quote was, the BP oil spill could not dampen my enthusiasm for offshore drilling. The oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico is a tremendous blossoming energy flower. Next we have Jim Sensenbrenner. He's a Republican from Wisconsin. And he has a quote here. He says, I personally believe that solar flares are more responsible for climate cycles than anything that human beings do. Next we have Dana Rockenbacher, Republican from Georgia, and at a congressional hearing, 
he suggested that global warming is actually caused by trees. And he had a quote here. It says that, is there some thought being given to subsidizing the clearing of rainforests in order for some countries to eliminate that production of greenhouse gases? It's very uh, unwise, wouldn't you say? Or would people be supportive of cutting down older trees in order to plant younger trees as a means to prevent this disaster from happening? Was the uh, second half of his quote. We have here a Republican from Washington, Ed Orcutt. He claimed, you would be giving off more CO2 if you're riding a bike than driving a car. That's pretty shocking. So however, this flawed thinking is not limited to just environmental policy. We're, we see it spilling over into all kinds of policy. Like for example, on gay marriage, we have this quote here from Republican, uh, Saxby Chambliss, let me go back to that so you can see it, and he said that commenting on why he wouldn't support same-sex marriage, he said, I'm not gay, so I'm not going to marry one, therefore I'm not supporting it. That sounds uh, pretty unenlightened, doesn't it? On immigration here, we have a quote from Don Young from uh, Alaska, he says, my father had a ranch, we used to have 50 to 60 wetbacks to pick tomatoes. And you're thinking, oh, well, he must have said that 30 years ago. He said it in March of 2013. Now let's go on to one of my favorites, Rick Santorum. <laughs> on abortion, he said the real Social Security, the reason Social Security is in big trouble is we don't have enough workers to, to support the retirees. Well, a third of all young people in America are not in America today because of abortion. He said that in May of 2011 during a Republican uh, debate, presidential debate. We also have Mike Huckabee on immigration. He said that America has to import so many workers because for the last 35 years we have aborted more than a million people who would have been in our workforce. On capital punishment, we have Republican Senator Orrin Hatch from Utah. He says that capital punishment is our way of demonstrating the sanctity of life. <laughs> and then we have, uh, this one also is a really good one. Most of you probably remember Mark Sanford, who was the governor of South Carolina. Well, he's now uh, back, and he's a congressman. As a matter of fact, uh, just as of May, he says that there are real chinks in the armor of evolution being the only way we came about. The idea of there being a, you know, a little mud hole and two mosquitoes getting together and the next thing you know we have a human being is completely at odds with, you know, one of the laws of thermodynamics, which is the law of, in essence, in essence, destruction. <laughs> we have Republican from Kentucky here. I would hope that creationism is present as a theory in the classrooms, in a science classroom alongside evolution, because remember, evolution is just a theory. And probably uh, most of you remember this lady who was running for the Senate in Delaware. She said, well, creationism, in essence, is believing that the world began as the Bible in Genesis says, that God created the earth in six days, six 24-hour periods, and there was just as much if not more evidence supporting that, I think she's best known for dabbling in witchcraft. <laughs> and we have here uh, a gentleman who serves on the United States House of Committee, the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. And uh, he came out with this quote just about a year ago. All that stuff I was taught about evolution and embryology and the Big Bang Theory, all that is lies straight from the pit of hell and it's lies to try to keep me and all the folks who were taught that from understanding that they need a savior. This is uh, Paul Brown of Georgia, who's currently serving on that committee. The current chair, Lamar Smith, is Christian scientist, and so there, there you have it. And uh, so next we have on to reproductive rights issues. We've got uh, a uh, Republican from North Carolina, Virginia Fox, here, she said, there's no more scientific fact 
then uh, that absence is the only way to prevent STDs and pregnancy. And then, of course, my favorite one here is the current governor of South Carolina. Women don't care about contraception, said Nikki Haley, who's the current governor of South Carolina. Good thing we don't live there. Oh, and this one, this one, unfortunately, did in uh, Congressman Aiken, but he said, first of all, from what I understand from doctors, pregnancy from rape is really rare, Aiken said. If it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. Remember him? He was running for the Senate in uh, Missouri last year and was a member of Congress. So those are the problems. Now, here we are. We're in Washington. We're in all 50 states, and we are certainly trying to combat that. We've got uh, a list here. You can see on the screens of bills that we're currently fighting. Equal protection rights for fetuses, absence only, money for absence only, and not properly correct sex education. Uh, vaccine research trying to prove that uh, is causing autism, uh, for example. And we have uh, some successes on the federal side. You can see here that we've been able to do a few things. We've uh, been able to beat back the religious exemptions in the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. We're trying to get uh, non-theist chaplains in the military, uh, prevent religious privileging and the tax code and school vouchers where money is going off to uh, uh, religious schools, federal taxpayer dollars. So we're working on health and safety issues. We're all over education issues, which uh, has a lot to do with creationism versus uh, evolution. We are very involved in discrimination issues, which would be marriage equality and uh, things of that nature. We are very involved at the state level. We have Bobby Jindal here having the laying on the hands, uh, you know, one day over at the state capitol, as you can see. And there's quite a long list of most of the egregious things are actually happening at the state level. That's why we've set up our 50 state chapters. We've got uh, quite the list going here where pharmacists can refuse to dispense emergency contraceptions. Uh, eight states don't inspect religious child care centers. 21 exempt employers from contraceptive coverage. 30 states ban all forms of marriage except for one man, one woman. 32 states sex education curricula is not medically accurate. And 44 states require school children to use under God in their Pledge of Allegiance. And the list is very long. We have just recently, Louisiana and Tennessee have passed uh, laws that require and allow teaching of creationism in public schools. We've got lots of states that also uh, allow uh, teaching of Bible study in those states, the long list there, in the public school. We have been able to have some state wins over the last year since we've created uh, most of the state chapters. There were two about a year ago, and now we have all 50 at different degrees of maturity. So we'd love for everybody in the room to get involved in your state chapter. Uh, for example, in North Carolina, they introduced a bill to allow North Carolina to declare their official religion. And anybody want to guess what it was going to be? <laughs> Southern Baptist. <laughs> And so we've been able to uh, beat that back. In California, we were able to beat back uh, public dollars going to religious schools. In Colorado, there was an intelligent design, which is sort of the, the new term for teaching of creationism. We we're able to beat that back in Colorado. We we're fighting that in 12 states, as a matter of fact. Uh, we were able to kill the bill in Montana also. And in Rhode Island, we had some success in bringing marriage equality to that state. And also, we had success with the governor signing a bill to have a national day of reason. We are scoring these people. We score all of the uh, 435 members of Congress. We score all 100 uh, senators. We score everybody who's running for president. And this year, we're scoring all the state elections. But fortunately for us and my staff, there are only two. We've got Virginia and New Jersey. Next year, of course, there'll be uh, many states that are having the state elections. So we'll be coming out with those scorecards and being very active in those two states come uh, September. And we're looking for uh, states where they're basing, uh, we're looking for elected officials that base their public policy decisions on reason and science. 
and not base it on their own personal religious beliefs or pseudoscience. And so how do we do this? We, uh, Secular College for America, we work to unify the movement, we work to facilitate the coordination within the movement among mainly the other national organizations. And so every Thursday at noon, you can find us all on the phone for 30 minutes, and we're going over uh, what is the White House up to in Congress, uh, all the secular events and the news, what's happening internationally with the UN. We give a judicial update. Also, we go over the state chapters, any new research that helps us make our case, of course, is something that we're very focused on, and expanding the coalition, and then also making sure that we're involved in charity work. We have a, a new guide that's going to be coming out in September that will be most helpful and will very much help us to turn around this trend that we just went over. It's called the Secular Policy Guide for Legislatures and Decision Makers. We've got our co-chairs in place, and so we're going to talk about and describe the constitutional framework, uh, all the health and safety issues, education, discrimination, uh, military discrimination, tax policy, international policy. And the reason something like this is so important as a former uh, Senate staff person and someone who uh, worked at the White House, you might have just an hour or two or three hours and your member will come to you and say, Edwina, there's going to be a vote. In one hour, I need the best arguments from the original sources, from the stakeholders, pros and cons. Perhaps it's, you know, it might be uh, anything like it could be uh, teaching of creationism in the public schools. So we've been at a disadvantage because in the past, our side of the story hasn't been really accessible. So it's going to be very accessible, searchable, electronic, sent to all the staff. Uh, for every senator congressman in all states and also at the national level. So we're very pleased to be coming out with this document in September. We offer all types of other resources. We've got, we, I talked about the call, we have a national sector calendar, we do legislative tracking, we have that at the national level in all 50 states. We mentioned the scorecards. We're also working on a, uh, a very aggressive outreach program for women and minorities. We, are, we do action alerts. We have all kinds of research available in our uh, 50 state chapters, of course. So we're certainly trying to make a difference here. And so how can you get involved? I would very much urge you to vote and vote in a very informed way and do your research before you vote for some of these elected officials that then we have to deal with when they come to Washington or at the state level. And then also, I would encourage you highly to get involved in your local state chapter for the Secular Coalition for America. You can just go to our website, uh, secular.org, and you can just get into the database. It doesn't cost anything. And put in your zip code, and then we know which state you're in, and you'll be getting your state materials. And then, of course, uh, as your before you leave the website, you can hit the uh, donate button. And so, just uh, a little bit more about uh, the Secret Coalition for America and what we're here to do. Uh, of course, um, you know we, we're dealing with a very serious threat here to our most basic freedom, freedom of thought and conscience. And so, I would like for everyone in the room to please stop being a what I would call a polite extremist. By doing nothing, you're being very polite and you're allowing the extremists to come over. So please consider joining the Secular Coalition for America and take back America. And so here we have my uh, information, our contact information. We have a table right out front where you can stop by and you can sign up to get into our database or you can go to our website. We've got keychains and other giveaways and all kinds of information. And I am the one who's standing in between everyone in this room and lunch. So I, I told myself since I'm right before lunch that I would not get up here and be long-winded, that I would be very aggressive even though I'm from rural Alabama. I would speak as quickly as I could so that you can get out and enjoy the fine food. So thank you very much. I look forward to meeting all of you in person. Thank you so much, Edwina Rogers. Edwina Rogers.